Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Kageyama, and I'd like to welcome everyone here to To Be Your Own Hero. And uh, we're taping this on a Saturday, and we, we're going to post this on Tuesday. And hopefully, everybody is, is having a great week. And my health is getting better by the day and working on it very hard every day. So uh, making slow progress. Uh, but making progress, and that's the important thing. I am so happy and honored to have Dr. Janet Palmer, who is amazing, absolutely amazing. And I'd like to bring her on at this time. Dr. Janet, please introduce yourself and uh, share a little bit about who you are. Thank you so much. I'm totally honored to be a part of your community. And I am always so amazed at how a simple thing as either requesting or accepting a connection on a social media platform, for us, it was LinkedIn. And how rich that seeming one dimensional connection can be. And the relationship that has evolved and continues to evolve as a result of our both accepting connections with each other has been invaluable. And so I am truly, truly humbled, um, humbly honored to be a part of your community and a part of your LinkedIn connection. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Janet. Please uh, share with us what you do and uh, let's dive into the to the topic, uh, you know, why you are a cancer warrior and a cancer champion. Thank you. I am a life coach and I have been that both for individuals and for corporations for about almost 20 years now. I was a school psychologist with a private practice and I kind of failed at therapy and psychology and basically did because the family that I clocked into was totally ahead of their time and reared us in a sense where labels did not define us. And they looked at the individual and expected you to be living your created purpose. My younger brother by five months um, was diagnosed with Down syndrome or developmental disabilities. And we clocked into a family that said, okay, you're, you're a member of this family and you will have chores and you will have expectations. And the higher they would set the bar, the higher John would accomplish. And we would have these family dinners and holiday gatherings and everyone is sitting at the table, you know, solving the world's problem. And John would come up with a one-liner that just summarized or enriched the conversation tremendously. And everyone would look at him like, wait a minute, you may have a 60 IQ, and you just said what you just said, how is this even possible? And so that began for me that sense that two things are possible. If one's heart and mind is held and cherished and valued, the possibilities are endless. And if we work from a place of richness and creating an environment of love and exposure, again, possibilities are endless. And so that then began to morph my approach to being the emotional navigator for people. And so that's how I see myself as an emotional navigator for those that are allowed to cross my path. 
That is beautiful. By the way, I, I want to point out to everybody, look at that incredible smile. She has just a beautiful, beautiful smile. So thank you for sharing that with us as well. Thank you. Thank you. And folks, I did not pay him. His <laughs> the mail. But yeah, it's still to be written. Let's put it that way. That sounds great to me. So we're here to talk, you know, start the conversation about uh, what happened in your world when you got diagnosed with cancer. <laughs> well, I am someone who sticks very, very, very stringently to the beginning of the year as a time of renewal, reflection. And so my annual evaluations are usually done between January and February each year for as long as I've known myself. And for whatever reasons in 2021, that got delayed and it really was not COVID related at all. There was just a delay. Things were just happening in my life and I just did not get my annuals. And so my PCP reached out to me and said, this is not like you, is everything okay? And that happened to have been in March, the latter part of March. So I went to see my PCP and, you know, he did his routine stuff and gave me referrals for my gynecologic and um, my mammo. So the first of which was mammo, and I went in April, had the mammo, and when I saw the mammo image, because I usually peek, um, I, I saw I saw something that had not been there, and that then began the scurry. The radiologist came in and said, "Hmm," <laughs> and then everybody else started, "Hmm." And I knew that meant something. So we went to a sonogram and then we went to a biopsy. And the staging of the mass and all of that got definitely changed as things progressed. We started off stage one, stage zero, then stage one. And at the end of surgery, it became a stage two, A. And there was no compromise of my lymph nodes. It was basically contained. The day that I got the phone call, I was on my way downtown to meet a friend that had just um, flown in for tea. And I was in traffic going to see her downtown. And just as, a, as an aside, the traffic was equally as bad on the opposite side going home. So the phone call came, I was told over the phone that yeah, it was a malignancy. And my initial response was, I guess I'm gonna have to continue to see her because getting home is not gonna happen as quickly as I would like because I wanted to be able to do that chitty chitty bang bang thing and snap my fingers or that bewitched thing. And I'm, I'm definitely dating myself. Um, snap my fingers and be home. In my I was bed. thinking about that, but I didn't want to <laughs> point that out. <laughs> yeah, you have to be a little over 50 to be able to know what bewitched is all about. But anyway. And um, the sad thing is, is I understood completely what you said. <laughs> It's a stat finger existence, right? You, you just wish it and you're there. So being able to wish that I was in my bed with my head covered was not going to happen in any sense of immediacy. So I decided I would continue. And I met my girlfriend for um, tea. The only problem was that I guess I formulate very rich relationships because the doctor's office, everyone in the doctor's office was distraught. I 
and they were calling me, no, Dr. Palmer, this can't be happening to you. No. And I'm like, well, why, why can't it happen to me? Well, you know, why am I exempt? So I'm trying to, in the midst of dealing with this whole thing myself, trying to bring their pieces together and not let my girlfriend be aware of anything. So she just thought that, you know, one of my clients was in crisis or whatever the case may be and pawned it off as that. I really wanted no one other than, you know, of course the PCD's office, but I wanted to be able to share this experience with my husband. So um, I cannot remember the drive home. I just remember I got home safely and we had the discussion, you know, and we basically decided that again, um, it was, a Friday that I found out. And when I got home, the doctor had sent me all the pertinent information and I have fabulous relationships. And so before many of my friends and, and, and so on relatives are in the medical field and oncologists also. <laughs> so within, by the end of the weekend, I had six second opinions. And so with a course with which to navigate and it was pretty cut and dry what I was confronting and there was no need initially. I thought I'd move back to New York and get treated because that's where my friends are and so on. But it, it really turned out that remaining where I was would be just as good. And I, 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 hate to say it, but at this side of it all, it really just felt like, okay, I had a broken leg, they did surgery, I did physical therapy, and I'm good. Because my experience, two things became real. What I had, how I had constructed my practice and the strategies that I had given my clients all along rang true for me. And so despite the fact that I reached out to coaches and I was involved in, in a myriad of different treatment practices with coaches, they were all like, Janet, you're solid. You know, your, your outlook, your mindset, your perspective on all of this, is rock solid. And so it was a pleasure to know that what I had offered to others for years ran true for me. And it had been the sustenance of my bone marrow. And that's what supported me and carried me through this very difficult stage. It basically, what you're telling me, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you were walking the walk. All the things that you had preached all these years, you had to live up to that expectation. And, and that's kind of what uh, happens with my channel. Um, you know, I started uh, sharing uh, my journey and looking to inspire people to appreciate their health, appreciate their lives. And, and so anything I say on, on this channel, on the inter any interview, I have to believe it myself because if I don't believe it myself, then how is somebody else gonna believe that? And, and so we have, when we say things, we have to own it. We have to believe it. And, and so that's what I see with what you're saying. Am I correct there? With a, with a slight tweak. I personally don't feel that I was now being called because of the diagnosis to actualize those strategies, they were very much 
an integral part of Janet. And so it was as if that framework, those strategies were tantamount to the fact that I still had use of my hands. I still had use of my eyes pre-diagnosis as I did post-diagnosis. And so the philosophy, the, 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 the how to was still as much an integral part of me as my name was. What? So when you got your diagnosis, I, I mean, for, in my case, for me, when I got my diagnosis, at that point, I knew that something was, you know, leading up to it because I was doing so much testing and everything like that. I knew that something was wrong because they wouldn't be doing all the, this humane stuff to me without any reason. And so I knew that in, in my heart, that's what she was going to tell me, my oncologist. And so I was mentally ready for that office visit when she sat my wife and I down and, and told me about my diagnosis. She basically said that, you know, your cancer is so bad, I can't cure you. And I said, okay. And but, but what that did was it triggered in me a call to action. And I knew uh, that I would have to move and act on my own behalf because I, I think what a lot of people do is they give the soul of themselves to their doctor and, and I wanted to go beyond that and do much more half the things that I, I most of the things that I've done I didn't even tell her I was doing she just knew I was crazy <laughs> and, and we butted heads like crazy until she realized how serious I was. You know, I wasn't just, I was on time for every appointment, every office visit, every hospital visit. And so she knew certain things about me that I was on time, that I was uh, concerned, that I was very invested in my own health. And so that's what, um, what helped me was getting that diagnosis it was the trigger to move and to go and to act immediately. And uh, one of the things I did was I totally changed my diet. And my, a friend of mine who's a nutritionist basically said, unless you change your diet, you're gonna die. And so I took all of these people that were surrounding me and I surrounded myself with some amazing, amazing people who I am so grateful for who helped basically saved my life. So uh, basically, could you share, you know, what went through your mind when you got your diagnosis moving forward? How did that propel you into your journey? <laughs> well, it was not expected. Um, I am pretty healthy. I, 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 I never had any any other illnesses. I, you know, I, at that point was 63 and wasn't taking anything other than vitamin D. Um, I have a homeopathic address to any malady, have always had that my whole life. And is an ex I'm an exerciser and he eat healthfully. Um, and so this was really very unexpected. And after I got off the phone with my PCP, he was also shocked. I mean, he, he's like, Janet, this, this cannot be you. Um, and so I got off the phone and still had enough time between where I was and where I was destined to be going to really just say, okay, God, um, the, the only one that seems to be caught off guard here is me. <laughs> and so I just need to know that if you're allowing this to happen, 
then there's nothing for me to worry about, right? <laughs> and the answer came back. Yeah, this is conversation between God and the devil. And have you seen my servant Janet? And so that comfort then empowered me to say, okay, so it's not gonna kill me. <laughs> um, so how are we gonna do this? And I basically said, this is not one of the things I would have chosen for Janet at all, okay? I I'm just saying, um, I think you have a little bit more confidence in me than I have in myself. Nonetheless, armored with his acknowledgement that he was not caught off guard, that then empowered me to walk on faith and walk assured that from my belief system, this is something that he knew even before my mother and father knew me. And so if he was that confident about my ability to sustain this and live beyond this, then I needed to grow into what it all meant and its purpose. And so that then became a new foundation upon which I stood and upon which I knew I was gonna be victorious. Cancer never scared me. What scared me was chemo because the imagery of shows that I had unfortunately watched as a youngster or a younger person, a younger Janet, depicted cat chemo as something that just wiped you out. And I remember saying to my husband, we're gonna have to put a new porcelain chamber in, in, in front of the toilet and another one where it is because my head is gonna be in one and you know the, the customary action is gonna happen with the other because I just knew I was going to be just debilitated by, by chemo. Interestingly enough, for me, that wasn't the case. Um, I was able to exercise as I had been up until my ninth to 10th treatment of 12 um, with chemo. And I was never nauseated. I was, you know, the only thing I lost was my hair. And I had been dress rehearsing that one for my whole life. Because as long as my hair would get to my shoulder, I'd, I'd cut it. So I had gone from long to short to long to short my entire life. The only thing I had never practiced was being bald. And, and so when my hair went, I just rocked it. You know, I decided that that, I was gonna wear different earrings in each year, which I started at then and I continued and really began to define myself as different and extraordinary and an overcomer. Over so that's the long to the, to the question that you asked. I love it, absolutely love it. I, I love your beautiful attitude and your outlook and, and that is so inspiring. And, you know, whenever I, whenever I look, watch an interview or live stream or anything, if I can gather one thing out of it, then it's all worthwhile. And, and mm -hmm. you've shared so many things that are just amazing. And I, and I thank you for that. And thank you. Thank you. Your, your outlook you know, it, it's just so incredible and people can, can draw a lot from your experience, absolutely. Because, you know, the purpose of what we do here is to inspire and to help educate because so many people just don't understand uh, what cancer really is. And, they, and when they hear cancer, it's, it's oh, you're going to die. And that's, you know, we want to change that. And we want to change that perception to, it doesn't have to be a death sentence. You know, we could 
overcome it or, or we can live with it. And uh, that's what I am so thankful for is to learn, uh, you know, how people, you know, we, in our cancer community, people come together and they're some of the most incredible, incredible people I have ever met. And we all look to help each other and, and inspire each other. And, and it's just a really, really incredible thing. So thank, thank you so much for sharing that. Can we talk about what an amazing attitude that you have, how you develop that and, and how you nurture that? Because it doesn't happen by accident. Again, I've got to, I have got to acknowledge that the bones <laughs> and the foundation upon which I stand is that of parenting that parents that were just rocks and they also um, stood on parents that themselves were rocks. And so what you see is an, a legacy, a living legacy of parents, grandparents, great grandparents that felt commissioned to pass on that sense of finding your creative purpose and knowing that you were created for this specific moment in time, not one day, two days, 10 years, four years in either direction, but now. And just as your DNA marks you specifically and exclusively, and your fingerprints do the same, your life has to do that. And because that historically has been an integral part of my experience, I stand on that exampling, I stand on that rock and know that, again, not to sound like a church lady, but my owner's manual, which is the Bible, says that in this life, you're going to have tribulation. That is a given. And despite the tribulation, we are to be of good cheer. And so if I'm already told I'm gonna have tribulation and I'm already told that even in the midst of that tribulation, there is the ability to have joy and that there is someone that has overcome, then what is left for me to do is to unearth that for myself. And so check, cancer was a, one of the tribulations in my life. Check, I was gonna overcome it. And check, God was gonna be in it with me. And so with those three pillars, all I had to do was accept it. All I had to do was, even in my weakest of moments, which I really didn't have any, but just the comfort of those three enabled me to each day walk with that certainty. And I kept working. And so I had a responsibility to not belabor the fact that I had cancer and I was going through, but to ensure that those that I served were bettered 
by our encounter. And the only way to do that was to live my truth. Wow, that is just so beautiful. That is just, so, that gives us an incredible insight into your thought process. And, and boy, I thank you for it. I'm so overwhelmed with inspiration. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, invite you back to uh, have further this conversation because we both know that we could talk for hours and hours and hours and, and keep going. A um, couple of things. Can you please share where people can reach you? There are many ways in which you can reach me. One is I wrote a book entitled Human GPS. If you put it in, it's available primarily on um, LinkedIn, but you on Amazon, I'm sorry. Um, but you can also get it on my website, which is janetpalmer.com. And you can schedule a virtual cup of coffee with me. And that has been an amazing experience for many because it's basically 15 minutes where you are applauded and affirmed for all that you do to make this world a better place. So you can read my book, Human GPS by Janet Palmer, available on Amazon. It's in hardcover, softcover, and ebook, as well as audio. It's a quick read. It's less than 100 pages. And if you want to work with me, you can again go to janetpalmer.com and we can begin the journey together. That is awesome. And I have one final question for you. What would you like to leave everyone as far as a final thought for this particular interview? that irrespective of the trial or tribulation that you are going through, know that some of the most priceless things in nature, diamonds, pearls, and we will take a pearl, for instance. Pearl is a grain of sand that has gotten into that of an oyster and is an irritant. It is a discomforting experience. And as that oyster is trying to rid itself of that, con that irritant, a very beautiful and cherished thing evolves in the nature of a pearl. And so regardless of where you are right now, that which irritates, that which seems burdensome, as does the pressure on a piece of coal become a cherished diamond, Look for your opportunity to be cherished, to be tremendously valued on the other side of your pressure or of your irritant, because the world needs your other side experience. The world is going to be better by the stories of victory, the stories of possibility, the stories of your process that you will tell on the other side of your very dark day right now. And so we look forward, I look forward to hearing you as the success. Wow, thank you so much. 
I mean, there is so much that we discuss that people could gather incredible nuggets of wisdom. And so for all of that, we thank you. We thank you so much, Dr. Janet Palmer, for joining me here on To Be Your Own Hero. Uh, it, it's been an absolute pleasure. We're definitely going to bring you back because we have a lot more to discuss. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your sharing you with everyone. We appreciate it. It was amazing. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to thank everyone for joining us here at To Be Your Own Hero. And whatever's going on in your life, you know, we live in a very, very divisive world with craziness and negativity and, and pressures coming from so many different directions. But we could still help make this world a better place by mm -hmm. contrib contributing positive positivity and doing small things for the people around us or big things, whatever that may be, but inspiring people and helping people to come together. And instead of, uh, you know, shutting somebody off because they have a different opinion, work towards a solution. I, I had that uh, with a friend of mine this week. And, you know, we, we totally didn't agree on politics. And, uh, and I just said, he's, we we're texting back and forth. And I just said, I said, look, you know, we've been friends a long time. And there's no use for us to uh, uh, divide and separate over something as ridiculous as politics when we've been friends for so long. So why don't we not discuss that and you know just talk about other things? And and he agreed. He said, "Yeah, I totally agree." And so, you know, it, respect. If we can respect our fellow man and appreciate our fellow man and appreciate our friends. And give them the space and, and the respect that, that, that they deserve and that we deserve, we can help make this world a much better place because that's what we need is we need people, instead of dividing, we need people to come together to make this, this place that we call Earth a much better place for all of us to live and for our kids to have a great place to live as well. So with that- I really want to thank you very much for sharing me with your community. And thank you for the opportunity to learn from you and to be blessed by you. So I thank you. Thank oh, you. thank you so much, Dr. Janet Palmer. We're gonna bring you back again. We love your spirit and we love you. Thank you so much. And with that, we shall see you next time on To Be Your Own Hero. Thank you very much. Oh.